going through a divorce, they'll say their main objective is to keep the house. But a house is an expensive endeavor and the cost of living in your home is filled with expenses, some that can be projected, such as your mortgage and utilities, and other expenses that are unknown, such as a new roof or maybe a new septic. There are also property taxes to pay, insurance, and maybe even a home equity line. When we explore the reasons why we can't let something go, it comes down to only two things, an attachment to the past or a fear of the future. See, often someone going through a divorce is so attached to what the house represented because she's afraid of the future. It's easier to stay put and deal with the bills. That is until you're drowning in them. Whether or not you keep the house should be one of the last decisions you make. Why? Because you don't have enough information at the beginning of your divorce to determine whether it makes smart financial sense. Keeping the house can be entirely possible, but your decision must be based on a careful evaluation. You must first know what you have coming in by way of income, child support, and alimony. Then you must know what your expenses and debt look like. Once you have those numbers locked down, you can determine whether your house is affordable or whether post-divorce you'll be house poor. Now keep in mind, because you're looking at your numbers as they will be post-divorce, you probably should be doing this analysis when you have the other numbers in place, such as support, and what portion of debt, if any, you'll be taking on. Or at least when you can make a good faith guess at what those numbers might look like. So many people make decisions about the house first, then they try to fit everything else into that decision. But whether or not you keep your house should actually be one of the last decisions you make as it relates to your finances. Because until you can project your future expenses and income and debt, it will be nearly impossible to examine its affordability. If you insist on keeping the house, ask yourself if you're holding on to the past. Are you afraid of the future? Is the hassle of moving just too much? Do you think your kids will want to spend more time with you if you keep the house? Do you feel like it's a win if you get it because your spouse wants it too? Make sure you're being honest with yourself about how you answer these questions. Remember, a new home can be a new adventure that is ready for you to make new memories. A house is just a structure. A home is the warmth you bring into it.